What's up guys, Kaiju Yoshi here, and I'm back with the last part of the Evo Fury review. And it's nature, so let's get started with one of the coolest nature cards in this set. That is Bronze Arm Sabertooth. Alright, this is a nature civilization evolution creature, level 4 beast kin, 7000 power. It's got evolution, double breaker, and one with nature. And this creature will be banished, put into your mana zone instead. So yeah, uh, there apparently there's like a ruling with like evolutions. I didn't really, I don't really know this because like I didn't actually play Duel Masters that competitively back in the day. But if this gets mana, the thing under it gets mana as well. So basically, when this dies, you get not one, you get two mana, which makes this a lot better. Basically, you get a huge thing that you could do a lot of damage with, double break, run over anything with seven thousand, and then once they do find an out to it. You get you can like drastically change how much you can drop stuff. Charge up a lot. Really good card. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of 5. It's really solid all around. It's definitely something good for nature. Strong and helps with mana acceleration. So yeah. All right, next up. Four set heroic shaman. This is a nature creature, level 5 beast kin, double breaker, 7000 power, it's this ability, focus anger says this creature cannot attack other creatures. Yeah, I don't know, I don't like this card that much, it's basically just like a really bad version of Bronze Arm Sabretooth. Not really much to say about it, I mean you can't attack creatures, that sucks. I mean, this card could be kind of interesting for like, just getting around every form of removal. Unlike Bronze Arm Sabretooth, this actually can play around stuff like Bone Blades, Return to the Soil, and Ice Blade. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to give this card a 2 out of 5. It's not terrible, but it's not amazing either. Next up, Granite Avenger. Alright, this is a nature creature, level 7 Colossus. Double Breaker with 8,000 power. Alright, I'm letting you guys know now that this card is absolutely broken. Like, when they made Brave Giant, I got so mad because I'm like, 7 for 7,000? Like, are you serious? And then they made this, 7 for 8,000. I don't know what they were thinking. Like, Brave Giant's been tearing up the meta everywhere. Like, this game's almost not even playable anymore. Now that there's Granite Avenger, I mean, you can run three of each. That's just so dumb. I'm done with this. 7 out of 5. Alright, yeah, no, but let's go back to that. Yeah, this card sucks. Don't run it. It's like one of the worst cards ever. Please. It's not really the worst card ever. It's worth it's worse than Brave Giant, but it's still a terrible card because it doesn't do anything. And you can just run something cooler like Bronze Arm Sabretooth, which just has a thousand less power than this, but can be dropped three turns earlier, and actually does something when it dies. When this thing dies, it sits in your graveyard, and then you cry because you wasted your time playing this in your deck. One out of five. Bad card. Next up, Illusory Berry. Alright, Nature Creature, level 4, Tree Kin. 3000 plus for its power, and it's got a powerful attack 2000. This card's mediocre. There's better things that you can be doing on turn 4 than dropping this. I'd rather be accelerating mana with stuff like Bronze Arm or Reap and Sow, which you'll see later. That way I can drop better Nature Creatures, turn 5 or 6 or 7 or something. Instead of dropping this for my turn and just having basically four for five thousand, which isn't even I mean it's decent, but like there's just better things to do on turn four. Just use the early turns like accelerate stuff or put like really small monsters on the board. And then once you're done accelerating, you can drop the big guys. This is not a big guy, this doesn't do much. I'm gonna give this card a two out of five because it's not terrible. Cause you could probably like there's a chance that you can drop this like turn two which is kind of interesting turn three two isn't terrible yeah two you can drop this on turn two or three which is really good but other than that not that good and it's not that easy to drop them that early next up is lepidos the ancient all right this is a nature creature level eight megabug eight thousand power double breaker 
and Deafening Wing Beat. Whenever one of your creatures wins a battle, choose one of your opponent's shields, and your opponent puts that in his or her mana zone. See, one thing I don't like about this is that it has to win a battle, which means it has to run over a creature. I'll admit, if it just had attack, this thing would just be, like, one of the most overpowered cards. That would be really stupid. But yeah, having, running, having to run over monsters is good. And running this in a, some sort of, like, nature light deck would be stupid. You can go, like, turn 8, drop this, and then turn 9, drop Orion, and tap 3, and then hit something with this. It be a really good combo, just saying. I think that, that could actually be a really good deck. Or you can just run, you could go drop this, turn 9, Storm Spark, and basically kind of do the same thing. Except... It's kind of different because you don't get that 10,500 body that you get with Orion. But yeah, doing it with Orion is probably better, unless you have like 10 monsters or something. But either way, this card's really good in combo with light cards, but without light cards, it's kind of mediocre. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, it's 8 for 8,000. This is going to be a really late game card. It's probably only going to be a few shields left anyways. If you were playing something with like light... And you were trying to focus on this, I wouldn't even try to break shields that much. Just because I'd just want to put them in the mana zone. Prevent shield blast. Does stop shield blast, which is good. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5 is what I'm going to give this. Decent card, great in combo with light cards. Alright, so I'm having some problems with scrolling down, I guess. Next up is Moon Howler Tribe. It is a nature creature level 2 beastkin, 2,000 power. It's a normal, basically, but this is a good normal because you can use this in rush, and if you are running beastkin, or if you're running rush or something, you can run this. It's 2,000. Beastkin is a great race. And yeah, I want to give this card a 2.5 out of 5. It's good in rush, but it's not good in other decks. Like, I would not run this in something like aggro, or control or anything like that because normals in either of those decks is really bad. All right, continuing. Where was I? Moonhell. All right, we're going on the Prickleback. This is a nature level one creature with beastkin, two thousand power, hit and run. At the end of each of your turns, if this creature broke a shield, return this card to your hand. So yeah. This card, I like it because it has to break a shield to go back to your hand, so if you do manage to run over something like a Dracon Weaponsmith, a Blaze Belcher, or something of that sort, this can run over that. And then it doesn't go back to your hand, which is really good. Even the fact that if it does go back to your hand, that can still be really good in certain situations. I mean, like, if you want to just go, it can be like a kind of like smaller, not as fast Gillow Flame. Where you can just break a shield and then just retreat back to your hand and then drop it again later. I mean, the fact that it's level 1 means that you can drop this with something else at the same time. Something that Gill of Flame kind of has a problem with. With Gill of Flame, you usually drop it and you can't actually do anything else for the rest of your turn. Unless, like, it's like turn 8 or after or something like that. But yeah, with this, it's level 1, so you can drop lots of other stuff with this. That can be some good combos and stuff. And it's Beastkin, of course, which is an amazing race, probably the main race for nature. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give this card a 4 out of 5. Great early game card, something that's really good in nature. If I was running Nature Rush, I would run probably three of these. And, yeah. But I don't like Rush, so I would never build that. But that's just a suggestion for you guys. Alright, next up is Reap and Sow. This is a nature level 4 spell. This is literally the top two cards in your deck. Put one of them into your hand, the other one into your mana zone. This card's great. It's something that nature could really use. It not only accelerates mana like what most nature cards do, but this also it just accelerates you in other ways too. It allows you to draw cards, basically. Get more hand advantage. Basically, unlike Sprout, you're not actually going to be taking serious minuses charging up your mana zone. If you do the minus one for your turn to mana, you can do this again, which will put another card in your mana zone, but you're not actually losing any advantage. So yeah, I like this card a lot. It's something that nature can really use, and there's no downsides to this card really. I'm going to give this card a 4 out of 5. 4.5, sorry. 4.5 out of 5. If it was a shield blast, I would give it a 5 out of 5, but it's not. So I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. This card's kind of like... 
a logo scan for nature. It's a card that will be ran for a very long time, if not for most of the game. Next up is Silver Fist. This is a nature level 5 creature, Beastkin. 4,000 plus power. It's got Heart of Nature. While all the cards in your mana zone are nature, this creature gets plus 4,000 power and has Double Breaker. This card is going to be 8,000 with Double Breaker on turn 5. That's crazy. This card is amazing. Now, one thing that, like, kind of popped in my head is that basically this is the same thing as Grounded Avenger, except you drop it two turns earlier. So some people may not like that as much. But I think that the two turns earlier really helps. Turn 5, dropping this is pretty solid. I don't think Nature really has that many turn 5 plays. Like, you have Quill Spike, but that's pretty much the only other card that you can use on turn 5. I think this card's pretty good. It's not the best for the mono Nature cards. That spot's definitely being taken by Reef Gladiator. But this card is up there. This card is probably second or third in the mono civilization spots i'm gonna give it a four out of five pretty decent pretty much a really aggressive early game drop card and it's one of the few cards that i think is decent even though it doesn't really have an effect per se next up is snap claw this is a nature level three creature that's a mega bug with 2000 power its ability evo might gives each of your evolution creatures 2000 more power uh, I don't like this card. I don't see why you wouldn't just run Essence Elf. It's not like Evolutions have a problem with power. You, you're seeing stuff like Laser Arm Dracon, 3 drop, 6,000. Bronze Arm Sabertooth, 4 drop, 7,000. Even Emperor Neuron with 5,000 power for turn 3. Like, that's still a lot. That's going to get over a majority of the stuff at turn 3. You don't need this. There's better stuff to be doing turn 3 than using this. So yeah, I'm going to give this card a 2 out of 5. It's not terrible. can have some uses. And yeah, I just think Essence Elf is better. And honestly, like, I doubt anyone would ever be running over, like, 6 to 8 evolution creatures in one deck. I would just be asking for, like, seriously inconsistent hands. So that's why I don't like this card. Just boosting one evolution creature is, like, not even really worth it. And the last card is Tendril Grass. This is a nature spell, level 6, shield blast. It says, put all creatures that are level 3 or less from the battle zone into their owner's mana zones. So yeah, this card is interesting. One thing is that it's put all creatures, yours and your opponent's, into the mana zone. So you have to use this wisely. If you're playing something like Rush, you wouldn't be running this card. You don't want to mana your own stuff. That's not good. I mean... At most points, especially if you're playing Rush. Having stuff in your mana zone isn't really going to help you that much in Rush. In all your decks, it can. This card's pretty good in, like, mono nature or something. You just have to play smart. Like, you have to realize that if you're running this card, this card could be in your shields at any point. And that if it gets, if you activate this and your own stuff gets manaed, you will be in trouble. But of course, when you're playing Verse Rush, it'll obviously be really good. It's a mass removal card, which I like. You have to be care. There's, there's a lot of things you have to be careful about with this card, though, which I don't like that much. You have to realize that if you have a field of, like, Razor Hide, like two Razor Hides and a Moon Howler Tribe or something, that if this gets, if they attack your shields and this gets flipped up, you're probably going to lose because you're losing your whole field. So, yeah, also there is the, you have to realize that your opponent, even if they get, like, if, even if they lose three monsters, you are giving them basically three extra charges. They're, you're preventing your opponent from minus wanting for the next, like, three turns or something, and it allows them to drop their bigger guys faster, which might actually cause you to lose. But, yeah, even though that sounds kind of, like, bad, this card's still really good. Not saying to not run it. You definitely should if you're running Nature. I'm going to have this card a 4 out of 5 because it is a mass removal card, and that's very good. All right, so, yeah, that is it for my Evo Fury review. I hope you guys like these videos. Thanks for watching, and peace.